Hello and welcome to the Religious Studies content for your information. Religious Studies is a very academic subject. It is all part of the religious faith, the Catholic faith at St. Peter's School. There's also philosophical aspects of, of religion and also our own lives. And it's about how we can be wise in what we do. In this case here, we're going to be looking at the academics so students can get those numbers so they can be successful. The Catholic topics for the exam will come from creation, incarnation, triune God and redemption. This will be 50% of the overall grade. It's on the 16th of May and it will be in the morning and it'll be 105 minutes worth of exams. It'll be one paper and in the exam itself, the exam board has given us these four topics and within those four topics, three quarters of the subtopics will be assessed. There is the ISBN for the revision guide if you wish to purchase that. It may be quicker to get that yourself. We do have some copies in school and we can order some. It may, however, be, be quicker for you to purchase that yourself through a bookstore or Amazon, something like that. These are the Catholic subtopics, which will, be, which will form part of the assessment. And this is the 75%. And the numbers that don't appear are the numbers that will not be specifically uh, questioned in the exam papers. For instance, number six does not appear in any of them. And number six is not to be assessed directly. That said, the exam boards do allow students to access information from any topic of the six that we have done or across topics in order to answer their questions. The second set of papers will be on the 26th of May, and that will be an AM as well. And that's going to be about 52 and a half minutes long, which is half the 105 minutes. Physically, there will be two papers for the, for the students to do on this day. However, it forms one paper, which is called Themes. The themes we are doing is Judaism and philosophy. So both topics of Judaism, which we have studied, will appear on the paper 100%. That's Jewish faith teaching and also Jewish practices of the faith. They will def those topics will definitely appear in the paper. Uh, depends how they want to add the, um, include the specific, specific questions, uh, it will be up to them, but we'll cover the, the broad gamut of topics nine and topics 10. The second paper on the same day will be the philosophical themes, and that's going to be a quarter of the student's mark. Once again, it's about 52 and a half minutes for that lot, which is half of the 105 minutes. Now, in this paper, once again, one physical paper, and in this paper, there'll be three parts, A, B, C. Now, students have only done two parts, and they are the two parts they are to answer. So it's, for some classes, it's A and B, and for my class, it's A and C. Okay, so only do two, and they will be referenced as A, B, and C. So choose the correct one to do, because the exam board will only mark two, even if the student does three. However, if a student is working to mark a minute, they shouldn't really have time to do a third topic, okay? Exam papers themselves are worth 24 marks each, multiplied by four, which is gonna be 100 marks in 105 minutes. So on the Catholic paper, there'll be four Catholic, top, uh, four Catholic questions of 24 marks each. On the themes, there'll be two for Judaism and two for the philosophical themes. In the past, 12 out of 24, which is 50%, is roughly a grade four. We really can't advise you on this one because with, with the advice and the uh, advantage that the boards are given to students, we do not know what the grade boundaries are going to be. Uh, the grades might go up, the grade boundary might go up, who knows? So we really can't advise on that at this point in time. The best thing is just to get as many marks as possible. The first question will always be a multiple choice for one mark. The second question will be a very short answer question with two facts for two marks. The third question will be pure knowledge, not evaluation, pure knowledge with two very well developed answers for four marks. Question four is also knowledge, which would be two well-developed answers for five marks. The fifth mark in this one is for reference. Example, to reference Genesis as being uh, people are made in, in the image of God, 
in Genesis, the creation of, of human beings, for instance, and a reference will be worth one mark. Now, students may be very specific about saying particular uh, scripture reference, or they may reference the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, Gospel, what Jesus said, things like that. But be very specific with making a reference to, to, to scripture and to use the scripture in, to support the answer as well. The fifth question is evaluation. That must be balanced and reasoned. That's going to be worth 12 marks, where students need to give a for set of answers and an against set of answers and come up with a justified conclusion in 12 minutes for 12 marks. The evaluation answers are based on the knowledge that the students have, so it's really important to get to know the knowledge and then to write something in the evaluation questions. There's no tiered entry for RE and there'll be two exams with three papers to combine for one grade. So 50% for Catholic, 25% for Judaism, 25% for philosophy for 100%. Okay, I want to give you an example of a 12 mark question and a good way to, to attack the question. So in this case here, Shabbat is the best way for a Jewish person to show faith in God. The question is basically about showing faith in God. But what students need to do is pick out what I call the, the, the key point is, in this case, it's, it's, it's Shabbat. So the number one key point to go to is Shabbat. How is Shabbat? How do, how can a Jewish person show faith in God through Shabbat? So what the student needs to do is highlight, underline, or circle Shabbat. I've really got to start thinking about Shabbat. Okay, That is going to be pretty much the, the four side of the, the evaluation question. And the, the other ways, the second part of that question is going to be the against part uh, for the evaluation of this question. So, for instance, they're going to start off by saying, on the fourth side, yes, because, and there's no need to write a paragraph of introduction. The student doesn't have any time to do that, and it's worth zero marks. Yes, because, and then give specific reasons why the Shabbat is the best way to show faith in God. And basically just taking all those things about Shabbat and how that, for a Jewish person, they can show faith in God. Against, we're saying no, because, once again, straight into the answer, other explicit and detailed ways to show faith in God. So look into that question. It's about faith in God. It's about specifically about Shabbat and specifically about other ways to show faith in God. So the student has to draw in all their knowledge about Judaism to think about how they can show faith in God in other ways. Okay? So it's not necessarily being negative about Shabbat. It's about taking an alternative to Shabbat to show faith in God. There are no extra marks for repeating a point. The justified conclusion typically is a newly developed point because, once again, repeating points doesn't mean double marks. Same things such as everyone has an opinion and this is my opinion. There are many reasons. It doesn't equal any marks. It has said nothing about Shabbat. It said nothing about faith in God. It has shown no other ways. Saying things like that is actually worth zero marks. Uh, it's not worth writing down because it's, it's taken up time and it's worth zero marks. Students need to be very specific and very, and very explicit in what they're explaining, what they're writing about. Okay, motivation. So at this time, students really need to be thinking about how they're going to be studying between now and the 16th of May. How I want to describe it to you is 40, running 40 marathons for one. If someone's training for the London Marathon, for example, they typically will run 40 marathons in their training schedule to run one marathon. That seems like, well, why do so many for one? The point is to be ready and prepared and to be out of go out there and run the best race they can for that one marathon after training and practicing for 40 marathons. So in order to get the best that they can on that day, they've got to do a lot of preparation. It's the same for students. It can't just all happen on the day. It's got to happen a long time before, and that's starting now, if not if they haven't started before. The important thing to do, to think about also, is that for that one marathon at the end, and in this case it's going to be many exams the students have to sit, it has to be run on that day. Okay? It can't be won the next day. The moment a student walks out of sports hall, they can do nothing more about the exam they've just done. It's got to be all put out there at that moment in time. 
the race has to be run at the time. It can't be run afterwards. So they need to do the best that they can. And the best that they can is going to come in all the, the training that they've been doing leading up to those exams. It's, a thing, it's to look forward to exams and think, I'm going to go and then I'm going to do my best because I know it all and to really prove yourself in that exam on the day. And sort of getting to a point where you can almost be enjoying going into the exams because you, you know it and you want to prove it. You just want to put it out on a paper and run the best race that you can. Okay, some study tips. A good way to look at this is 45, 10, 5. That's an hour, 60 minutes. So flat out sit for 45 minutes. Have a 10-minute break. Have a quick walk, some push-ups, get a drink, get some food. And then spend the next five minutes getting yourself back into the motors to start again. Now, I've said no phone in the room because it means no phone in the room. Do not have anything that's going to distract during those 45 minutes. The 10 minutes break is to get out and get on the phone and do what you need to do just to just to chill for a moment. Do not have the phone in the room or else you're going to be distracted by it all the time. If you are using a phone or a laptop to, to help you with your studies, fine, but don't have the ping on because you're going to be distracted. You've got to get 45 minutes on or longer, depends how you want to go. But you must give yourself some breaks, but you must have focus time without the phone. I do suggest having some quiet Mozart music in the background. It sort of works really well with study. Want to, to be quiet, not loud rock and roll, which it can be very distracting as well. The simplest way to, to study, you've got the mind maps, your flashcards, flowcharts, storyboards, drawings and diagrams. They all work perfectly well. One of the best ways to learn, though, is through audio recordings and then listening to those audio recordings. So a student can make some notes, record it, and they can just continually listen on listen to that. It's a lot quicker to keep going back and listening to it than going back and getting out all your books and starting to write things down. Writing things down is also very important as well. But once you've got yourself some good set of notes, record it and, and, and constantly and continuously listen to it. So any dead time you've got, like traveling to school, wherever you get to school, that can be some dead time. Start listening to some of your, your study work. There's only a few weeks to go. Make the most of it. Study groups are also a very powerful way to study as long as the group is studying and not just there for, um, for some social time. Okay, so study groups can work very well because in a study group, talking about the work is a very good way to, to learn. Teaching someone is also a very good way because you have to articulate and think about what you're saying. So teaching someone is really important as well because you're at a point where you know the information and you can start to explain it to people. That's a very, very powerful way to learn. Okay, to finish up, uh, some healthy lifestyle tips. Uh, get some good sleep, not too much, but look, make sure you are well rested, not too many late nights, and don't get onto the, the game stations at late at night, and then you're going to be sort of very tired the next day. Water is very important. Keep yourself hydrated, not too many fizzy drinks or too much caffeine. Stick to mostly water or juices. Lots of good food, fruits and vegetables is going to keep you awake and working well. Not too many heavy foods. Sport and exercise is going to be really important at this time. You may pull back on some of your clubs, perhaps, but still keep yourself fit and healthy. Go for, go for runs or swims or cycles, walk around the block. Keep yourself active because it will help with your, your brain power as well. Some social time is important, but not too much social time. That includes time on your phones or on your social media. Yes, keep in contact with people and see people occasionally. But no, no big parties and things like that, okay? And also taking some time for yourself to some, some solace time, some prayer time to think about something else and just to be able to relax yourself and get yourself in a sort of a soulful place as well as a mental place and physical place which you are going to be doing for your studies. So think about some prayer, just think about some, some quiet time, some stilling time for yourself. Now, I've cut out there the phones and the video games. Now, look, I don't mean to cut them out completely, but you really must start to minimise them in this time. And look, students, you really need to need to listen to mum or dad when they say, hey, look, give me your phone while you're studying. Uh, you've got to do that. You've got to minimise the time you're on your phone when you're doing your studies. By all means, use your phone when you can during your breaks and in your downtime. Once again, with your video games, keep it to a minimum. You can get hooked onto it and forget to go back to your studies. So once again, have it as some sort of escapism to, to chill time, but not excessive time. The main thing is to give yourself this time to, to study 
you can sit on the beach all summer after your exams. You really want to look forward to the, the envelope you get in, in August because you pretty much should have a good idea what you got. You don't want to be shocked by any results and it's too late to do anything then anyway. So really enjoy sitting on the beach over the summer and you will enjoy that if you've enjoyed your study time and your exam time. And all the best of luck. A lot of students are really starting to motivate themselves. We can see that around school. We can start to see people doing a lot better in their, in their time in the classroom, okay, and, and the study materials that they are putting together. So all the best to you, particularly everyone at home as you go through this time. And students, we're all praying for you and uh, we all want you to do your best. So good luck and all the best. Ciao.